This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Hello and welcome to Horsing Around. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. Today, joined here by a very important guest here, we have uh, Mr. Greg Darnell. Mr. Darnell is a, a great uh, gentleman and speaker we're going to have, an educator about bits and how the bit potentially could uh, affect horses. And I think that's where we're going to go with it. Just uh, tell a little bit about your, your biggest interest that you have as you kind of evolved through bit making and, and education. Over the years, Chris, from start to finish on this, my primary goal and interest, not only as a producer, but as a uh, a horseman as well is the preservation of a horse's mouth. Obviously, if I do my job correctly and build good, safe mouthpieces and bridle bits, the preservation and the longevity of that horse's mouth stands a better chance. The second part of my endeavor is always to try to educate people about what the conformation and oral cavity or the inside of a horse's mouth is like and the parts of it that are affected by those mouthpieces that we build. Yeah, no, I, and I think that's a, a great point, as you mentioned, is just the confirmation of the horse's mouth. What kind of things, when you start talking about the confirmation of a horse's mouth and how a bit could affect that, what are some things that maybe even riders and owners should really be paying attention to when it comes to that? And, trying to pick a, a bid and those kind of things. Obviously, before we ever bid any horse, we want to do a physical inspection. Yeah. Whether you're there, Chris, to help and guide, or whether they're doing it on their own, we're primarily consist, uh, we're interested in buckle flap, mm -hmm. the interdential space, which is that space between the canine and the pre premolar. We want to make sure that those bits, see, uh, those interdental spaces have nice sharp crowns on them and that they haven't been damaged. Always, if a horse has a physical problem, I'm going to rely on you and your expertise to help me with those things. But the physical inspection, if I don't know they're there, I can't ask for your help. Tongue is the other thing that we're going to look at. Has it been cut? Has it been lacerated? What do we need to do to avoid that tongue if it has been? Yeah. Palate is one of the third areas, that area that runs from the incisor clear back to the thorax. It's got a hard bone underneath it. If that's been damaged or lacerated, we want to know about those things before we ever get ready to put a bit which is a foreign object in their mouth. And, you know, whenever... Um you're taking and thinking about a bit and you start talking about tongue like even there's been some horses just doing a general exam that have a lot of scars on their tongue from what I would perceive potentially as being a bit maybe depends on what kind of things they put in the mouth but there are several ways that tongues get lacerated usually the owner uh, is going to deny ever having pulled on one so yeah obviously you have to read between the lines Anytime that tongue's been lacerated, as you know, that is a weakened place in that tongue. So obviously, in the selection of a mouthpiece, we're going to pick a mouthpiece that doesn't further injure that lac laceration. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins with Horsing Around, and we'll be right back. Well, my name is Bill Meredith, and I uh, farm about 7,000 acres. We raise about 150 head of Longhorn cattle. It was real frustrating for me to not be able to have my hands on it. When I'd come down in the morning, I'd almost cry because my back was hurting so bad and my memory is so bad. And I'd been to Mayo's Clinic uh, feeling like it was not nothing was happening as fast as I'd like to see it happen. My land guy come and pull up beside me and he asked me how I was doing. I told him I wasn't doing orthodern. He was telling me about this treatment they were doing down there in Manhattan. Anyway, we come up here and got this treatment, put some in my shoulders because I couldn't bend my head like this. I finally uh, started to get my uh, memory back and I'm able to do about everything I was doing before, maybe more. I, I went outside and raised my hand and praised the Lord, you know. 